Welcome back to another episode of the Freedom Train podcast series. I am your host, Joseph Ward, and as always, I'm joined by my good homie, Mr. Patrick Irvin. Remember that the Freedom Train podcast series is brought to you by PAX Inc., and that's P-A-C-T-S-I-N-C, and PAX Inc. is a black development organization aimed at developing the black community to its maximum potential through a focus on education and economics with the traits of hard work honesty and integrity and for more information make sure you visit their website at www.pactsinc.org that way you can learn more about PAX Inc. You can learn about their code of conduct, how to become a member, how you can donate, how you can get involved in the initiatives they have, literacy programs, sports programs, community surveys. There's one of my favorite parts of the website there's a learning center and if you hover your mouse over that learning center you get a drop down box a whole bunch of resources like audio information, political information, books, survival information, legal cases, and videos. And there's one more important component to this website. There's an Amazon Smile component. And some of you probably like, well, what is Amazon Smile? Well, Amazon Smile basically is a program where it helps nonprofit organizations as far as and gaining donations. So if you, you know, you already shop at Amazon. So you naturally go to Amazon. And when the Amazon Smile program option comes up, you select it and you opt into the program. You can sign up for a specific organization that you want to, um, that you want your proceeds to go to. So you can sign up for PAX Inc. So every time you buy something on Amazon, you'll have a small portion of your proceeds that will go to an organization like PAX Inc. So that's the purpose of the Amazon Smile program. So make sure you check that out. And remember, PAX Inc. website is www.pactsinc.org. Also, make sure you visit our Freedom Train website at www.freedomtrainradio.com. You can learn more about myself, Patrick, Queen Shelby, Queen Candace, and Enigma September, and all of the great content that we produce right here on the Freedom Train Network. And the right path. Yo, you read all of that? No, that's freestyle. That ain't no freestyle. I can see your eyes, homie. We ain't we ain't podcasting no more. We well, got video. Well, no, some of it, some of it I read just to make sure I know, but the rest of it freestyle. Hey man, you know what's up about being on video? What's that? I'm used to eating and stuff during our show. <laughs> well, you gonna either do it or not do it. Which one? Like you gonna I do? got a whole hmm? apple, some plum cots, a baby roof, payday. I got all this food over here, and I'm like, wait, I can't. We live. They gonna see me. I can't just mute my mic and take a bite. You know what I'm saying? This is this ain't gonna work, bro. This is tough. Well, you can you can just you can decide which which demographic. You focusing I your got, energy on, and oh, you can either eat I or not eat. I got a whole Aunt Mama pancake thing, <laughs> like, and I can't take a bite of nothing, bro. This You're not is, supposed to be the one with the ingredients, not today. Not, not they tri- <laughs> oh, Segway, who we got? I see beakers. That ain't them. Is not beakers. Let me stop saying that. <laughs> them is them is uh, glasses. Of liquid that is not pee, Joe. Get your mind out the gutter. I said it was pee. You did. We both heard you before the show. Who we got? Okay, so I first met this young lady Mm -hmm. maybe two or three years ago at a working class Wednesday event. Joe, you've been holding out for two or three years? (laughs) No, man. Hey, see, uh, stop I'm interrupting sorry, me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm starting to get ahead. my groove. My, you interrupted my me. My bad. Okay? My bad. My bad. My bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. My fault. So, let me, I got to start over now. So, <laughs> working class Wednesday, I hear about a scientist in the building. So, for me, mm-hmm. naturally, I'm like, hmm, who is this scientist I hear about? So, when I finally discover who they're talking about, I introduce myself. We have a conversation. And start following each other on social media so i'm paying attention she's a neuroscientist she's living black history so i'm I'm gonna say it like that she's living black history because we're going to get into it into in the interview she's a neuroscientist she's living black history she's here in tallahassee she uses her platform to make sure 
that black people have a place in STEM. She also uses her platform to teach up and coming young black kids that not only can't you do any and everything, but here's a living example in front of your face. What I love about her is she, she earned her PhD, she earned a lot of accolades, and she didn't run from her community. She ran to the community to help the community. Um, because of her efforts, she's being, she has a statue that's being created about her and for her because of what she has contributed, not only to science, but to our community. So I want you all to give it up for Dr. Latasia Jones. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for all the wonderful words that you just provided in that introduction. Let me tell you, I've been in science for over 13 years and they do a lot of introductions for you as a scientist, but I love when I hear my people, especially outside of science, talk about those things because it shows me that is an impact that I'm actually creating. And it's helping me say, okay, continue to do what you're doing. When the tough times come, I know Mr. Ward over here is looking. So he's mm, like, next, Dr. Jones, what's next? So I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. oh, no problem. I mean, and thank you. For everything that you do is needed. Everything that you bring to the table is definitely needed. Like Pat and I, we're, we are into science. We're into technology. We're into a lot of different things that the traditional black person or the image of the black person may not be into. But what we have found is once you get out and get to know different types of people and you travel, there are many different black people who are into many different things and you'll mm -hmm. find more similarities than differences. So it's got to get outside the box. I'll be trying to school Pat all the time. He don't be listening. No, nah, Joe, actually, see, I want to <laughs> say this, but since you decided to take a shot, I'm going ahead and throw it back. See, when you said y'all started following each other, let me interpret that for the audience. Joe started cyber stalking her. That's what I meant. She had what no up? clue he was following her because she was doing her own amazing thing, setting records, becoming the fly person that she is, doing what she does. Whatever. Joe just stalking her with this I whole disagree. narrative. She following me back. Come on, Dr. Jones. You I disagree. Let me tell you something. There. My favorite thing about Mr. Ward is how he tells the true history of Black people in his books. Right. Oh, mm. You may okay. think I don't ever stalk him back, but I do. Uh-oh, <laughs> Yeah. See, See what I'm really pass. doing. I'm, I'm, playing, I'm playing matchmaker right now. <laughs> oh, your oh, face. Look at you. What you Look mean? At you. <laughs> <The catch. laughs> see, All right, so see, we mess around there and walk right into his web of deception. You yes, you did. Yeah. You know what? Because yeah. she's the first person to fight back. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, people just ignore me and be like, "Yeah, he's stupid. Forget about him." <laughs> so hey. I like, I like that. Cool, cool, cool. So, Pat, you got the first question. Let's do this, man. Let's kick this off. So, um, I'm going to be honest here. I put my glasses mm -hmm. on. <laughs> Another mistake by Joseph. I try to keep them off because my screen, you can see my. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. In the, yeah. So, unless I look oh, down no, like this. Like there you go. Yeah, you but then I can't, use, then I can't see you, the questions. You're supposed to use oh. the incognito on your phone so we won't see your little nasty stuff. I'm so. not on my phone, bro. <laughs> I'm on my computer. That's it, that's what I'm saying. You're supposed to put that on your phone because we on the Actually, what you're there. looking you know, at is the stream yard so they can see in my glasses <laughs> what stream yard look like on the back end. So, mm -hmm. but when I take them off, right, like I can't see the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm in a tough spot because of Joseph once again. Um, and then, too, on top of that, um, I ain't getting no questions in my email, so I don't know what Joe told me. Pat, don't say this. Don't ask that. Don't be stupid here. So I'm going to do my best to not you, cross no lines without no guidance. Yeah, see, <laughs> see, I'm going to wait till after this. I'm going to go to social media, and I'm going to out you. So just, <laughs> just know. How you going? How you gonna out I'm, me, bro? I, I'm gonna make up something. I got, hey, I'm, I'm a lie. 
I'm a lie. Oh well, <laughs> you know, you know. All right, so this is what we got. So, and actually, we've been doing this so long, I can already guess what the first question is without even seeing it. Watch this. Well, watch this. Yo, tell me if I'm on point. <laughs> so, get seen. So, Dr. Jones, uh, can you tell the people, you know, Joe gave a wonderful introduction about you. He got, you know, he definitely, um, you know, shed a lot of light on who you are, what you've accomplished. But can you tell people how you became interested in in science and STEM and and uh, being a neuroscientist? How did you really get involved in those things and find the love and the passion for those things? Absolutely. So before I went to um, start earning my degrees in college, I mm -hmm. really started on the biology pre-med track because I wanted to be an obstetrician, gynecologist. I wanted to deliver babies, essentially. Mm -hmm and help with women's health. And I thought that was like, you know, top tier, the best position you could ever get, just being a doctor, period, right? Mm -hmm. So started pursuing my degree, wasn't really interested so much in the being in a lab yet, but I didn't know what it meant to be interested in being in a lab or being a scientist either. So mm -hmm. I was walking in my department one day, there was a flyer on the wall it was posted saying, hey, there's this internship opportunity. At this time, I was going to Virginia State University. My family was still all located in Virginia. So mm -hmm. the internship opportunity was at the College of William & Mary, which is also in Virginia. So it made it very easy for me to be like, okay, I'm not going to be too far away from the family. And I kind of get this exposure to being a scientist. Why not? Why not? Why not stay on the campus for a summer, figure out what it means to be a scientist, be in someone's lab and explore that new side of just something I've just never seen before in life. Um, this was the first experience that I had where there was a woman owning her own lab, creating her own experiments, providing information to society that helps with understanding medical dis diseases, basically, that affect anybody and everybody that has like cellular reproduction issues or cellular cycle issues. Um, this was so enlightening to me because one, I was working with microscopic worms. I had never heard of a microscopic worm before, <laughs> before this internship. And there were so many other things that I realized I'd never heard of with the years leading towards as being a scientist. So that was the biggest thing that opened my eyes to being a scientist. This woman that was leading this lab, which I always say she was a boss, right? Because before then, I thought the boss as a scientist was Bill Nye, the science guy. So technically, you look like him, you had to be him, you had to be a him in order right. to become a scientist. And here goes this little black girl now in a lab with you know a woman scientist that owns her own stuff. She's telling people what to do. She has grants on her with her as a lead PI or a professor that's working on the, that research. And people are coming to her for a, assistance and collaborations. So that opened my eyes. I was like, okay, <laughs> I guess I can be a boss in this realm as well. <laughs> Then it led to me saying, let me explore the science a little bit more. And just the interest level of the things, it was so exciting to be in a lab working with microscopic worm. And then when you go home for family reunions and they ask you what you're doing, you know, my, my family didn't know about microscopic worm either. So <laughs> it opened a lot of others' eyes and it showed me that the excitement I had was not, you know, I wasn't the only person excited about these things. Other people were as well. And it's just because of lack of exposure lack of those opportunities, and just not even knowing that was an option. So that I would definitely count that as being one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to pursue science. A few months after starting that program, I met the first female that was African-American that owned her PhD that was owning her lab as well. Uh, not the first female, sorry. The first one that I had ever met. So right. The realization was connecting in all ways. I not only had to be, a, I could not, could not only just be a woman and own a lab, but I could be a black woman, have a PhD and own a lab. So, and, and all these things were exciting. So now all of the interest level had peaked at that point, because now I'm seeing me. I'm seeing me in all these elements of who I can be as quote unquote a boss. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you got to tell your family, family reunions. That I play with worms for a living. Yeah. 
<laughs> right? Yes. Scott was wearing the big exact. It only, yeah. it only got worse from there. It only got worse from there. Yeah. And then I when bet, they make you mad, right? You can be like, I got a bunch of them in my hand. I'm going to throw them at you right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, how do you get microscopic worms and how do you know micros where they come from all those types of questions i know you got <laughs> <laughs> right right I mean, it gets worse because eventually i ended up my last projects that i was working on um were all with mice so you know black people don't do mice so right. <laughs> that's that, a that was a different type of conversation <laughs> right. we know what that is but we don't do that <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And what's funny is black black people have never seen a mouse. It's either a big rat or a little rat. See, you step outside. <laughs> right. So rat. You're talking about a mouse. <laughs> so a mouse. You mean like Mickey Mouse? Mini no, it's a rat, baby. Right. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Joe. Like Ninja Turtles. <laughs> so neuroscience. Mm -hmm. Um, for a lot of people, it's something they may have heard of, but they, they don't really understand what neuroscience is, or some people may not have even heard of neurosciences. And you, here you are a whole neuroscientist. So can you break down to us what neuroscience is and kind of like as a neuroscience, neuroscientist on a daily basis, what are you doing? Right. So at the simplest form, a neuroscientist is somebody that's studying the brain. And what okay. I did, you can study the brain in multiple ways. There's multiple regions in the brain. There's multiple types of cells in the brain. There's multiple pathways that are associated with certain things that allows certain things to happen when it comes to you being a human. Um, it's, it had two major projects that were neuroscience related. My, both of them were associated with neurological diseases that affect kids. So that's when I I can make an impact when it comes to kids without even being a physical like physician or something. Uh, so now I am actually studying the things behind the scenes. And the first one was a distor disorder called dystonia, which is very sad, but it, it basically you ever seen like a double jointed individual that has twist, they twist their limbs by choice. Yeah. Well, a person that has this dystonia, and especially the kid, the subset of kids and family that I was looking at, their muscles were contracting and their limbs were twisting, but without them wanting it to. So they would be, they may be in a rest position. They may be trying to like walk, run, just sit and stuff would twist and muscles would contract and it's very painful. It keeps them up, of course. And I always, I always give the example of kids that are unable to play sports or ride a bike or so on because now they're forced into these positions that's not allowing them to actually enjoy their childhood. Um, with that particular project, I was looking at the brain regions that was associated mm -hmm. with creating dopamine. And if you, anybody that doesn't know what dopamine is, it's one of the neurotransmitters or it's very, it's one of the things responsible for that uh, voluntary movement. So. Um, essentially, without dopamine or with a lack of dopamine, it can lead to disorders like dystonia, where your muscles are contracting, your limbs are twisting without you voluntarily doing that. Uh, my okay. second project was um, actually in to make a correction. When I left Tallahassee, Florida, I went to the D.C. area and I was working at Children's National Hospital where I was studying autism. And at this point, I was looking at the corpus callosum, and that's a brain region that's basically responsible for your communication from one lobe to the other. And without that, or with abnormalities within that, you can only imagine how much is going to go wrong within the brain, because your brain needs to constantly communicate between different regions. Right. Or right. Uh, so I was essentially looking at particular proteins or genes associated with that, that those deficiencies or those abnormalities. So on a day-to-day -day basis for a scientist or a neuroscientist in particular, we're looking at other people's research. We are trying to figure out the answers to our own question related to our research. We're using novel devices or novel techniques that other scientists have used and perfected and have answered other questions with their uh, techniques or devices. And we're trying to implement those into our own stuff to hopefully find out the answers to our questions, but in a more expedited fashion, in a more 
uh, efficient fashion as well, because you don't want somebody to come behind it or you don't want to repeat the, the experiment and it doesn't come up with the data that you had originally. You don't want to have false data. So right. a lot of things goes into that depends on, for me, I was working with mouse models. So anywhere from putting a woman with the, the female with the male so they can reproduce all the way to having kids, sometimes doing the actual surgeries um, on pregnant mice and looking at the brains of the, the, the babies basically. Um, because I was working with the childhood disorder. So you have to have it where it's parallel with your research. And for me, um, it was easier to do it at the younger ages because it's closer to what's actually going on in the onset of autism. So, and it, it varies per neuroscientist, of course, because not everybody's working with that region. Not everybody's doing autism research as well. So it has to be different. It has to be work according to your research and your subject or topic. That's so cool. That's cool <laughs> as hell. <laughs> that is. I thought so too. I thought so too. A lot of people are grossed out, believe it or not. Um, my first experience with the mice was at Florida State University. And mm -hmm. the lab literally opened up a mouse, a pregnant mouse, and was taking out the babies so that we can create some type of um, cell culture from the brain. And people mm -hmm. like, running away, some people are hiding their faces, and I'm over there like, what's next? <laughs> How can I get here? And that ended up being my lab for the remainder of my years. Um, and I will say this for anybody that's listening, follow what keeps you like interested, keeps you challenged, keeps you excited. Because if I never had said, okay, let me pursue science and let me go into this lab in particular, um, it would have never, I would have never ended up in Florida State, never been in the Department of Biomedical Sciences. And then five years later, I would have never graduated as the first African-American to earn my PhD from that program. So there's so right. many things that come out of just following what's keeping you going in your field, your career, whatever journey you're on. Mm -hmm. Walking Black History. Y'all better know it. <laughs> better put some respect on her name. All right. <laughs> you know what's dope about that? <clears throat> there are like two professions growing up that I, I wanted to be. One was a neuroscientist or a neurologist. Mm. Um, and the other one, well, I guess that's three because those are two separate things. And the other one was, uh, was a psychologist. Um, right. And unfortunately, I never became any of them. So um, we've interviewed psychologists before. Um, and I've gotten a chance to talk to numerous neurologists, but mm. this is the first time I've gotten a chance to talk to a neuroscientist. So that's real. That's like so dope for me. Like on a, on a just on a another level. Like I'm like internally Yay. geeking out, but I'm Yay. keeping it cool because I don't want to embarrass Joe. But not, it's <laughs> just so dope. Pat, you know what I'm saying? Pat, you you think I set you think I set this interview up to cage you in, my brother? I'm yes, saying you yes, you would. Yes, you would. Because <laughs> it's on, it's on video too. You would be embarrassing me for the rest of my life. No, oh we're not goodness. doing that, Joe. We're not doing. But so, but this is really, really dope. Listening to you talk about what it is you do and what you know, all of that going into it and whatnot. Um, I'm, a, I'm gonna translate another message from Joe when he was saying that it was dope with you explaining what you were explaining he was really just talking about the sex part that you mentioned oh, no. so <laughs> so translation over it. so See, but, all right all right the gloves are off now <laughs> but it is no but uh, real talk though it's really like i'm really like yo this is a real life like neuroscientist like <laughs> word Yes. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Hey, I appreciate that. I right. appreciate that. Right. I need that energy. Nah, it's dope. It's dope. Like, and we need more kids growing up to be neuroscientists. This right. is dope. Yo, it is. I agree. I'm, 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 I'm right there with so, you, man. I'm. Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Do your thing. So, you're talking about neurological disorders. Um, I I know I'm very curious, but how are 
neurological disorders cause? What's the origins of them? Can they be prevented? Um, do they have things now? Or do we have to see down the line if, if uh, new things are invented to help prevent neurological disorders? Well, I'm actually glad that you asked that question because have you ever heard somebody saying, what's taking so long to find the cure to cancer? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So that's, that's a common question, right? So when, when you ask me what's the cause of neurological disorder, it's, that is a complex question in itself. I can never just mm -hmm. answer one answer because, and I'll give you an example. My okay. research for my PhD, that Estonia project that I worked on, the issue that created the disorder was related to an issue within genes. So this family had a gene that was messed up somewhere. It had a mutation within the gene. The okay. research that I did at Children's National in DC with the autism project, this was in relation to a particular protein that was having, it's just abnormal in itself. It, either it was lack of the protein uh, more of the protein or whatever else that was creating the abnormalities within that disease uh, or to create that disease. Um, and then other things could happen. You could have plaque formation, which is one of those things that we look for for Alzheimer's. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of some others, but it, it can go beyond genes and proteins and plaques. And it could be maybe just you're not creating enough dopamine for a different reason. So when I bring up pathways, I'm talking about essentially things that are connected one, one thing to another in order to end up with the final product. So if you have 20 things that create the final product, right. one of those 20 things could be messing up the final product or some of those things working together can mess up the final product. And that's how we come right. out with so many different neurological diseases or forms of certain diseases because there's so many things that can relate to or be associated with the final disorder that's created. So I can't give you just a plain question uh, answer for that. Uh, I know the ones in relation to my projects. If anybody's ever interested, which probably usually nobody is, but if you look up <laughs> my name in the bidet lab at Florida State University, you'll see my PhD work where you look, you would get more insight as far as gene mutation. Um, and there's a whole article out that we published in reference to that gene mutation and how it ended up giving us the proof that we needed to understand that that was the reasoning for the disorder. Um, and then at Children's National, I worked in the Tory lab. So if you look up the Tory lab, you can look up any of the papers in relation to plexins and you'll see that different reasons can lead to different disorders. So right. actually that's my answer. I try to put it in a nutshell, but I hope it I hope it dragged home, you know, the biggest picture, which is there's so right. many things that could be associated with disorders that I can't give you a plain answer. I kind of figured I was I kind of I had a I had a slight slight <laughs> hint that maybe that might be the answer because I right. when I was typing it up I, or when I was even thinking about it before I was typing it up, like I I, I know that there are different factors, but I was mm -hmm. just hoping that it was a little more like fine down so you can kind of just say yeah. well this 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 and this but hey it's fine but it's it's a reality though that there are many factors that can lead to neurological disorders so we have right. to uh, i guess just keep learning as much as we can absolutely and even to take it further we need more scientists we need mm -hmm. more skills and in these careers and my biggest platform right now is to say we need more diversity within these fields because if we're not some things are only associated with certain pe a certain type of people uh black people mm -hmm. have a, a lot of different things that other people other people don't have um so mm -hmm. yeah. if people are more interested in studying those things then where are we going to go as far as progressing and becoming better with our medical attention our medical progress and advancements and so on Y'all hear what she just said? <laughs> we need more black people yeah, in the sciences. Yeah. You heard him. Absolutely. I'm tired of being alone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dr. Jones said it. And we've been telling y'all for four years to get Ooh. into the sciences. And y'all ain't right. been listening. You keep right. laughing at us. Right. Thinking that we're funny. We appreciate right. it. We is funny. But we're telling the truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And and I appreciate I appreciate the stunt on this too. When you explaining your PhD work, it's beautiful. 
I love it. Keep because I, I think I think people need to celebrate their their triumphs in life. And then mm. um your yours people can go see you you not only just are saying hey I did something you actually have something that that contributed to the betterment of us as human beings. So Absolutely. I love it. And I just think always encourage people to um celebrate Celebrate your wins, whatever you do, celebrate it. Uh, I know I need to do it more, but mm -hmm. I'm always telling people to do that, especially us as black people, because we're always taught to be humble, be so humble to it to an extent that we can't celebrate ourselves. So I'm glad right. that you're in the space Ooh. where you, you don't mind celebrating yourself. Let me tell you that in itself, being so humble where you feel like you can't celebrate yourself. I didn't become comfortable enough to celebrate my triumphs and all those accolades and stuff until maybe a year or two ago. I didn't right. technically call myself Dr. Jones until maybe a year after I received it. And that's that's so right. big what you just said because a lot of us feel the same way. We're taught to be humble. And if you say something, it's like, oh, she's a little too, she's cocky. No, let me live in my truth. Yeah. I, it, yeah. I get here. And then mm -hmm. I'm saying these things exactly. out loud, I'm hoping somebody else exactly. hears it and gets inspired. So mm -hmm. I, I hear you. I hear, and then we right. don't have every day to live here. So you better celebrate while you can. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, I want. I want to try to be deep. <laughs> right. I want to try to be deep. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I have my hand <laughs> up. So, um, <laughs> celebrate your losses. Mm. Because it's the opposite of celebrating. <laughs> Yo, when <laughs> and you need to be good on opposite day, which is Tuesday. Hey, you about uh, you about pothole deep. You about <laughs> pothole deep. I see. You. Yeah, you feel that by some rain. Can I clean that up for you? Can I clean it? Up? Would you like me to clean go, it up? Go ahead, Doctor Jones. I, I laid up that alley so you can hoop it. No problem. No problem. I got you. I'm bringing it. So I would say acknowledge your losses because this mm -hmm. is not where you're going to stay. And even if this is at your lowest point, you can only go up from here. So mm -hmm. you acknowledge right. it. Now it's time to come up with a plan. And then once you get up, you now you can start, you can start uh, talking about your triumphs once you keep going up from the loss that you had that you ignored. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because if you try to score 14 points and you don't, then you know that next time you need more than two touchdowns. Boom. Hey, hey. So hey. you learn something. You learn something. Somebody been watching Sports Center. <laughs> I have, have Sports Center still come on. All right. So um I got a question. So you got a chance to teach uh biology in Ghana. You, when you say Ghana, you gotta go up inflection. Ghana. So, can you tell us, like, what that experience was like and, you know, like, what was the most rewarding part of that? Like, what part of that do you celebrate in terms of celebrating the triumph and and celebrating the losses? <laughs> okay. Okay. I see where you went with that. I see how you brought us. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I went um probably in between my first and my second year of my master's years and I was in this pit of trying to understand where I was going next like I understood that I love being a scientist I just didn't know what was next after your master's what are you going to do with Tasia so that, that was essentially the question um my advisor reached out he said hey I found this opportunity for you to go to Ghana I know you're trying to explore your family lineage I found out that my family on my mom's side is from trace back to Ghana so this was an amazing opportunity. Went and taught science, math, and English to the kids at two different schools. Um, so in the midst of teaching, I realized a different aspect of myself. When I was teaching science in particular, I was showing pictures and I was making little things so they can actually see a visual understanding of what they were trying to be taught or trying to learn. And it helped out and it brought more excitement to what they were actually learning in class. And it, this brought me to another realization like we can't always keep doing this lecture based type of platform for teaching these kids now because they're a little bit more advanced. Now you got kids looking at iPads and stuff at the age of five. I was not. So 
if they're more advanced when it comes to learning because of that exposure that they're more advanced in, then we need to elevate and we need to upgrade how we're teaching. So I decided, well, look, now that I'm here and I'm exploring this amazing opportunity and I'm getting this excitement of how I'm teaching and I'm realizing that I could do this, I need to continue doing this. So what was the best way to do that? Let me get a doctorate. So then my end goal became no longer just being a scientist, but I want to create opportunities for other people to do the things that I've done, whether it's go to foreign countries and teach or, you know, be able to go into these labs here in the U.S. and be in these lab experiences or just having somebody come to your classroom and show you something different. This was also the first time a lot of those students had seen an African-American female scientist. So that exposure mm -hmm. in itself this, you're in the right place and you need to continue, but make this bigger than just you because I need to affect more than just the people in my little community. So went off to that's how I decided to go off to Florida State. So my triumph that I celebrate here <laughs> would be acknowledging where I wanted to be in my journey as far as education and career wise, where I wanted to work towards and putting at the forefront my people now because now this is a direct a lineage or a direct impact towards people that look like me. There was nobody else in any other kind of shade <laughs> there. So now this was, okay, what are you going to do to get back to you? Um, and then was there a loss here? Like, <laughs> I, I no, no, you don't have to play no. that game. <laughs> well, let me say, I would say my loss was not preparing ahead of time. Because why was I thinking in uh, my master's years about going to a PhD program? When I should have already. There you go. But I, I'll bring it back to saying a lot of us don't. Even, a lot of us don't even know what a PhD is in our family. I wasn't raised to know what a PhD was. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's that's another big thing um, that I got past that. So I'm, I brought you to a loss just to bring you back to a triumph because now I. Need that's right. That's yeah. right. In your face. Circular. That's what we do. That's what we do. We bring it full <laughs> circle. You know what I'm talking about? Hey. You do you do one more of them. You're gonna re I'm gonna replace you with him and we're gonna just move <laughs> forward. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> nah, but that's that's real cool though. You get a chance to to take something that you love, take it internationally, and still be able to give back to people, like you said, that look exactly like you. Um that's just real. That's so cool that you get to live in your truth. Like you say, you get to take what you take your gift and just share it with so many different people. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying it like that because I want I want more of us to be able to experience that. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who they have a lot of dreams, they have a lot of aspirations, but they may mm -hmm. not have the know how. They may not have the um <laughs> they, may, they may not have the um the resources or just the connections any anywhere to help them get to where they need to go so um right. that's why that's so cool and i just want more people to hear you being able to say that so it can mm -hmm. inspire so many people um you know that representation matters and you're part of that representation i appreciate that definitely so. and I'm use whatever platform okay. that's do what you just said to do. Let them know. There you go. So, and Pat, I saw you reading the questions. <laughs> yeah, I, I I actually blew up the screen so I could see him. <laughs> I was like, "That's right, I'm a tech geek. I know I can make the words bigger. Why not just do that?" So there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I was having right. a moment earlier because of the neuroscientist. My brain was like, but now I'm settling down and. Oh. The, the tech stuff is coming back. Like, bro, you, you're you being stupid right now. Make the, <laughs> make the words bigger. Yeah. So you mentioned this earlier. The first person to, the well, first black person to earn a PhD from the Department of Biomedical Sciences at the College of Medicine at Florida State University. Right. Um, what was that experience like? What was your whole feeling when you learned that you were the first black person to achieve this and how do you how do you feel like your achievement will help the future of black people who want to follow in your footsteps definitely so that's a big question um 
so for me, when I realized that I was going to be the first one to earn my PhD that was African American for the program, um, first of all, it, some at some points it was lonely, right? Because I'm starting out when I went to university, it was right after Trayvon Martin was killed, and it was right before Jordan right. Davis. So I came in in that pivotal moment where it was like, okay, girl, you're black, and now you realize being black and you want to give back to the blacks and you want to do this by getting a PhD. This is right after Ghana and defending my master's. So now I'm here in this and in the U.S., I don't feel appreciated for my skin, but I'm trying to be in this program and excel in this program. And then I don't have anybody to essentially vent to because nobody else is reading the news and they're not affected the same way I am because I'm the only African-American in this program. Um, that was there was no professor. Right assistance in the labs or anything else that was uh, African American mm -hmm. and the staff mm -hmm. members within the office. So now this this brought me to a lot of times just being by myself, but then it also gave me the motivation because now I'm like, okay, well, let's use this to your advantage. And then let's tell people about it so they know they have these opportunities as well. So I was essentially looking for any and every opportunity to not only not only financially so now i'm going for fellowships or uh scholarships or whatever else that can increase my salary because anybody knows as a grad student you're not making anything uh <laughs> and then on top of that i was like if there is an opportunity to, to go to a grad school fair and if my department is there i need to be there if we're hosting a, a grad school or a department orientation i need to be there if we're hosting students right. over the interviews I need to be one of the people that's hosting so that way I could be not only a face that you see so you could see okay you, you could be welcomed here as well and you could feel comfortable here and you can excel here but I also want to pull you to the side and say hey look I'm making it 2017 is the end goal plan that's when I'm going to graduate as the first one you could do this too and then let's stay in touch so anytime you get to your low moment we could talk through it talk you through it so you can so you won't be one of the numbers that fall out over the years. Right. One of the things that hits us the most, we usually say, okay, let's give up because we're, we don't have somebody there to talk to or vent to. And nobody understands because we're talking to family members that once again, they're not understanding what a PhD is or what it means to be in this five to six, seven, eight year program uh, researching in a lab and so on. So it, the accolade of becoming the first African-American to graduate from that program with my PhD wasn't just an accolade, it became a job. Because now I have to go back and I have to make sure that 2017, I get it, it's only three years ago, but that be it better not look like that in 2020 or 2021 or whatever else. Because now I want to inspire others to say, okay, she went to that program, she went through it, she did well. I wanna do the same thing, whether they're going to the same program or somewhere else. So, that's why I also use the platform to talk about being comfortable in your skin and being comfortable in these programs and how you can be competitive, even though you're the only one, whether it's the only black person, right. the only the only male, whatever else, um, and being able to still excel while you are yourself. And then who to rely on through those situations, because often you do get imposter syndrome and issues with confidence and so on. So now it's my duty to make sure I provide platforms that's going to fill in that gap and assist you with understanding that your potential within these programs and essentially work your way to that career. Right, see, you took an approach that Pat and I talk about a lot. We're, we're big fans of the movie, The Spook That Set by, uh, by the Door. And uh, if you've never seen that movie, basically it's a, it's a black man who became a part of the CIA, became a CIA agent, just to learn all the information, learn all the mm. tactics of organization and self-defense and all these things. And he learned that information and took it back to the community to help organize and build a community. Right, and right. so we, we idealistically, we would love for the best of our black people to only, well, to, to have the options of going to the top tier Black institutions and studying because these black institutions are on par to whatever mm -hmm. with the standard that they set for themselves. Right now, we under we understand though that 
because of the situation that we're in, that you have to go outside of your community sometimes, or maybe a lot of times to to gain information, resources, and knowledge. But if you have the 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 heart and mind to bring it back to your community, then we we'll, we definitely have to applaud you because you get it. You right. you understand that in order for others like you like yourself to exist, they have to first see you, but you have to also be able to give the information. It's the reason why mm -hmm. people in the hood look up to rappers and drug dealers because they see them all the time. Right. But if they saw other things, it would be different. And you you will right. you will break so definitely kudos yeah. to you. And, and um, cold. Code six. Yeah, so we it's, and it's just like I say, it's just so it's it's just real cool that because I was in I was just I was, I've always been impressed. Uh, well, can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I thought. Yo, man, you like need that. to tell so, CenturyLink um, to step, bro. Like, what is happening? What's happening, <laughs> Joseph? Okay, that's what I thought you were talking about. I wish, sure. It can, <laughs> it's messing up. It's making me break down. Will you? Um, I don't know, but you just stopped talking like, huh, for like a bunch of time. And anyways, code six of the Pax Code of Conduct cracks in the concrete is what. Oh, oh okay. She just exemplified. okay. So you threw me off. You just, just threw it out there like that. So that's what threw me off. I had no idea what you was talking about. Now we <laughs> see this. Is what I got to work with. You see what I got to work with. That's why my that's why my no, headline don't you, exist no more. So janky behind intro net. What is going no, on? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Straight hey, man. Jank up. <laughs> hey man, look sure. here, look here. All right. So I'm Dr. We, Jones. We're gonna come up, okay. Dr. Jones, no, we on to come up because our internet connection is clean and clear. Oh, do that. <laughs> I don't know what you got going on over there, but it is not coming nowhere. So hey, forget you. Forget you. <laughs> Dr. Jones, uh, let me let me ask you um in, in the line of what Joe asked about being the first. A uh, black person to go through the program there. What's it feel like to to know that you have a statue being built? <laughs> How does that feel? That's like some Rocky Balboa Iron Man type stuff. Like, is that weird? That is so <laughs> surreal. If you would have told me years ago that I was gonna have a statue, I'd be like, "Yeah, you're not. You're you're just pulling my leg. You trying to joke? What you what you trying to do here to my psyche?" <laughs> but yeah, it's it's definitely it's a dream come true because the purpose of the statue matches everything that I am right now. And it took me some, a lot of years to get here to have this full understanding of my purpose, which is to. Mm -hmm advocate for diversity in STEM, advocate for diversity in anything. I don't want any kid that looks like whatever they look like to be afraid to pursue any type of career or academic program. And then I want them to be exposed to it so they don't feel like they didn't know their options before they signed up for a particular journey. Uh, so this statue is actually uh, one of the initiatives of the If Then Ambassadorship that I am a part of. And that is headed by Lida Hill Philanthropies, which is this amazing woman that decided to combine being an entrepreneur and being a philanthropist. So she uses that money to go towards motivating young girls to pursue STEM careers by seeing current women in STEM careers. So just in case anybody doesn't know, STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. And I've met out of the ambassadors, I know y'all think that I am amazing, but I have met shark scientists, bear scientists, um, a woman that studies bats. I've met cancer biologists, all types of, you know, a woman that works at Spotify and does data analysis, which I didn't know you could do parts of science and math and stuff when it comes to a music streaming, you know, app mm -hmm. or else you're using. So 
I'm learning while meeting these people. I met a lady that was one of the producers for Fortnite and all these kids playing them, but they don't realize the things that go on behind behind the scene. So I say I am amongst what I would call <laughs> like these are amazing people creating these avenues. And who would have thought they're all women? So right. 125 of us, and we are all getting full figure statues. And I actually for the first time saw my a picture of my statue last week, I think it was, and I shared it with everyone. Because for me, it's not only showing people that a woman could do these things, but now I'm showing black girls that they can do these things. And that that's has that has been my biggest dream. And I thought I had to get like a Nobel right. Prize. I had to end a war somewhere or like <laughs> you know, publish a hundred papers in one year or something to do this. But it's essentially, I was granted this opportunity because I am living in my purpose. I'm mentoring, I'm creating programs, I'm advocating for this already. So it was just part of the journey of saying, hey, this is another platform. Show those girls what you didn't get to see when you were young. And it, it shouldn't right. take college to get exposed to this. So now I'm giving that opportunity to girls before college. And I'm so your question, your answer to your question is this is surreal. This experience is amazing. I never would have thought it would have happened. I am honored. I am. I feel completely blessed. But more on top of it, the feelings that I have for myself, I am excited for the future generation and having this as an option, as something right. they could be exposed to. Right. Like you, my new superhero. Like I want to be like oh. you when I grow up. I swear. Stop it. <laughs> Stop. I swear. Now that's just, that's so that. that's so cool. Like. Uh, we try. We both trying to hold it in, but <laughs> then we like geeking out on the inside because it's like it's so. You got you got your own statue. Like your your greatness is captured. Oh my god! And it's not going nowhere. So that's congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, so so much. Yeah, so, I mean, and it's go ahead. I got an off the beaten path question since you mentioned STEM. Okay. Um, how do you feel personally about STEAM with them trying to add arts into the STEM mixture and turning it from STEM to STEAM? Does that make you feel some type of way that maybe art shouldn't be included? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So I, I read a research article years ago that told, um, told me a lot about us as a people. We don't learn mm -hmm in a regular fashion. We can't just take lectures anymore. We need a little right. bit more improvision and advanced ways of teaching. So if art is one of the ways to connect to my kids or to my little nieces, nephews, cousins, whatever else, do that so they can be exposed to those things. And I've, I've actually seen, so now I have a new position at the American Society for Microbiology, and I have seen art being implemented within science. They use, so they use like bacteria cultures and create, portraits of women and stuff in these little dishes. And you can know, you can identify which bacteria is what based on how it's growing, uh, what color it is, its shape, its structure, whatever else. But at the end of the day, when you look at this plate, you're like, oh my gosh, this is art. To the person that doesn't know anything about bacteria, you're like, this is kind of neat. This is beautiful. This is classy or whatever else. And then to tell them what's bacteria, you know that? <laughs> so, I want to, I love the fact that this is another avenue in learning and this is another avenue of teaching um, because maybe I didn't get that and maybe I didn't need that when growing up. Um, I was more of a hands-on doer. So it, that helps me more so when it comes to learning. But somebody out there needs to see it in different fashions and styles in order for them to get excited about it just as much as I am. So if art is your way of connecting, do it. So I, I definitely, I would never anything in education so i don't feel away right. at all right see that joe so you can stop <laughs> see, I knew it. picking I knew on it. me see, you did for fly. using <laughs> you can stop <laughs> picking on me for using battle rap to teach critical thinking it's oh, art you know? absolutely not Ask, don't you stop that don't stop that don't make a valid point earlier don't make a valid point earlier he said that when you go back to your neighborhoods and your communities Everybody understands all those rap lyrics and they want to be a rapper because that's what they see. So now let's yep. rap about, about STEM. Like yep. I have a, see. I have a 
follow on Instagram, he uses like Cardi B lyrics and stuff to teach what's going on in his lab. So I'm always up there like, this is kind of cool. Even me, doctor already has a PhD. I'm like, this is cool. And he has so many followers and so many likes each time because this is what the kids are doing on TikTok. So if you can relate to them through rap or whatever right. else, teach them something through that. It's all about your method. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pat, you're going you to stop trying to throw me up under the bus. Yeah, see what I mean? <laughs> He always, he always trying to do stuff like that. It's all good, though. I'm trying to bring him brother down. so comfortable under the bus. You're very comfortable under there. You got a sleeping <laughs> bag. Hey. <laughs> well, when you got that Aflac insurance, they pay you to, to get hit by the bus. So, you <laughs> <laughs> so stemming while black. Mm. I see it. I see the um, I see the, the the lives that you have. I, see, I saw I caught some of the episodes. Um, I see you have Janae White as one of the hosts. What's shout out to Janae? Um, yes. And it's an unapologetically black stemming platform. That just made mm-hmm. me feel good saying that. So I'm gonna say it again. It's a <laughs> unapologetically black stemming platform. Right. And right. you are you are you are you create this platform, you're pushing this platform, you want more people to know about this platform. So please tell mm-hmm. us, just give us all the details about Stemming Wild Black. Absolutely, absolutely. So just as much as you it excites you to say it, it excites me to hear it and it excites me <laughs> to know that I created it. Uh so I I initiated and created Stemming Wild Black in June. It was in the works earlier this year uh, for a lot of different reasons, whether it was the social climate for Black people or just my own personal stuff. I delayed it, but I think everything works out in great timing because it was started uh, right after George Floyd and Breonna Taylor's uh, situation had right. become the greatest hike uh, as far as the viral video and so on. So the mission of Stemming Wild Black is essentially the things that you just talked about is to be unapologetic is to have this platform to speak freely is to showcase this amazingness in our in black people that are in stem careers or academic programs and Mm -hmm. encourage the future generation to aspire to be in those careers or academic programs regardless of them being black or a woman or a man or whatever race ethnicity culture gender or whatever else they have going on to go against the society and the norm in STEM and be okay with going against that and feel encouraged to go past those obstacles and challenges and receive what is waiting for you at the end of that journey. Uh, So I have over 18 black panelists and Mm -hmm. they're all in STEM careers and STEM academic programs. I have people who are in their tech teachers in tech. I have a young lady that is pursuing her doctorate in education, but has already been utilizing her degrees in math uh, to teach. I have students who are at predominantly white institutions that are, they feel alone um, a lot of times, but they are pursuing their degrees or Mm -hmm. NIH programs and so on. So I have varying levels of individuals that can cater to any and every question or any and every uh, pursuit that people that are tuning in are thinking about. And you don't have to be trying to go into a STEM program, you can still receive something from this. So we started in June and originally it was supposed to be a panel discussion that was only gonna be a one and, a one and done. Uh, but once we started advertising the panel discussion and receiving the questions, we had over 300 people that were interested in being in attendance for that day. And these individuals, these registrants uh, in our audience, shall I say, stayed up there for three hours for the first panel discussion. Just wow. listen to the answers to the questions that they submitted to us through the job form that we have for registration. So we said, okay, well, this is not a one and done. We got to keep the ball mm-hmm. rolling and, and keep, the, keep it rolling while it's still hot, of course, because now you have graduate students who are not just going through similar stuff that I went through, going to Florida State after Trayvon Martin and right before Jordan Davis uh, murders. But also they're going through a pandemic. 
they are, you know, being disproportionately affected by the pandemic, where mostly black individuals are, are more affected than any other individual right now and dying because of it. Uh, and then you have individuals that were losing their visas or had visas on the line because of not being able to go into classes for the face-to-face -face interaction for their degree programs. So right. I thought this was a pivotal moment to just hear from the students. So our second panel discussion was just about students. What, what questions do you have? And I knew that this was the program that needed to be here for a few different reasons. Once again, we had, I think it was two, two and a half hours for this program. And everybody stayed up there all the way until the end. I think only three people fell off and it, one of them was my panelist. And then it was on, we had a question that basically said, how can you continue to stem as a black person after seeing how the US treats black people? And when I saw that question come in and that was the question for one of the, for, for the panelists to answer, I knew that stemming while black was here for we were meeting a need because people needed right. to hear. I get it. I'm sitting up here as Dr. Jones and I'm telling you about all these wonderful things that are is happening and that I'm creating and so on. But it hurts me to know that I am walking in my flesh and I'm not accepted in my flesh because of my co the color of my skin, even though I can contribute so much to any community. So it's just, that's what people were hearing over and over from our panelists and all our panelists are different. And we talked about strategies and staying encouraged and having self-care and getting past all those obstacles, whether it was racism, microaggression, whatever else. Uh, and then that rolled into our third edition where we had the, this was an exciting one for me because I didn't know that I could learn something from it, but we had a, what are the challenges that black women in STEM face, which I know because I'm a black woman in STEM, but I didn't know is the one for the males, which was what are the challenges that black men in STEM face? And I learned everything from being the only one to I can't be emotional because I am told or I am expected to be strong as a black man, but mm -hmm. me too. And then of course the commonality between the two, which is we didn't see people that looked like us when we were kids that were pursuing these careers. So a representation issue and visibility, visibility uh, issue that now stems our motivation to say, okay, that's why we're going to continue to support initiatives like this or create initiatives that's going to create that visibility factor or increase it. So that way the future generations aren't stunted as we were. Um, so just a, a short little plug because you talked about it earlier. Our next edition is coming up the weekend of October 24th and 5th. And it is the HBCU homecoming edition of Stemming Wild Black. And this is to essentially say HBCUs are very necessary, one. Mm -hmm. They are capable of creating successful Blacks in STEM. And I say this because I am an HBCU grad. I, I went to Virginia State University and graduated with my bachelor's and master's in biology. And I would not have had the confidence I had when I walked into the door at Florida State University as the only Black in my program if I had not been surrounded for six years by Black people who were excelling in academics and being strengthened about be, by being surrounded by my people who were all looking forward to a positive outcome in their educational journey. So this is the time where we are going to essentially highlight Blacks in STEM who have gone to or are currently going to HBCUs. And we have collaborations with HBCUs STEAM, STEMming Forward, uh, HBCU Stimulus, and I think that's it. I want, oh, uh, Bridge Alliance. I want to make sure I get them all in there. And they all have the same initiatives. There's, there's aren't completely geared toward uh, STEAM or STEM, but we're all working towards the same mission, which is to highlight our people, show that we exist, show that we are amazing, and that HBCUs can create this amazingness in us. So tune in the 24th and the 25th. Flyers are going out this week. So where, where can people find more information about STEM and Wild Black? Oh, so the amazing thing about my sister, who is also a in the STEM career, she's a cybersecurity analyst. She oh. created my website for me. So I definitely, I'll 
because she's the younger sister. So if I don't say anything about her in this whole interview, she's going to be like, so you talked to them for over an hour and my name didn't come up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if Latiko is listening, I definitely want to say thank you because she now has a website set up for me where you can not only see anything about STEM and Wild Black, but any of my other initiatives, my YouTube channel, any thing that I put my hands on and collaborate on, it's at heydrtay.com. So H-E-Y-D-R-T-A-Y.com. And you can find Stimming Wild Black panelists. I also have African-American or Black uh, hosts. And then we also bring in psychologists at times that are Black with PhDs. So you can get more information about those things because mental health is important to Black people. So that is to bring that out. Um, and then hopefully we can get Mr. Ward up there in the future because I have a great yeah, buddy. in the kitchen. So <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. I have an I have an idea as well. So yeah, let's we we're we're gonna talk. We're definitely <laughs> okay. gonna talk. Yeah. Put you on the spot so, now. Yo, you gonna right? <laughs> represent the uh the school of hard knocks? Is that what we do? Does that I'm count as the HBCU? I'm representing um, the psychology program at FAMU, okay? Yes. I like my idea better because the school no, of hard knocks no. leads some recognition. <laughs> but there you go. There you go. That's for you. <laughs> so um, I, I love, but I love the way how you talked about the need for Black STEM. It, it's a need for Black representation mm -hmm. across the board, but we created science. Like science, the whole STEM, all, all of STEM was created in Africa before right. any other people called themselves intellectuals. This stuff was happening in Africa, and right. from a from a uh, you know a history standpoint, as a historian, that's one of the things that's going through my mind. Is oh, I have I have a whole lot of information about different people from different parts of history who contributed to STEM. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this information together and we're gonna talk, so. Yes, yeah. yes, please do. And then like, uh, in, if anybody out there is a black in STEM, we have a directory set up there as well. And there's directories for a lot of different reasons. We often hear employers say, we can't find diverse candidates for our positions or for mentoring our children or our kids or whatever else. We have a, a directory that's updated on the first of each month, and it has nothing but Blacks and STEM in that di that directory. There will also be a new one that will create career pathway information from Blacks and STEM who went to HBCU, so you can understand what your possibility in your degree in STEM could lead to after going to HBCU. So these are just some resources to kind of like break down the stigmas when it comes to diversity within these workplaces and these academic programs. We exist. Joseph, you keep saying that we, we are here. We are here. All of us are here. It's just for yeah. some reason, overshadow, ignore, yeah. and erase. So I'm going to be the change. I'm going to make sure right. you, are, you are seen. I'm going to be annoying to somebody, but oh, well, I'm doing it for us. Well, hey, if you're going to be annoying, we're down. We're we're there yeah. with you. We want to go with you, and we're going to be <laughs> annoying and loud with you because they are going to know black people are here, and they have friends like us who are loud. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> one of the one of the coolest things you created was your YouTube channel. <laughs> hey, Doctor Tate. So, everybody who's watching and everybody who's listening. Go to YouTube, and I need you to subscribe to Hey Dr. Tate. Do it right now. Not right now, but right now. Do it. <laughs> subscribe, Hey Dr. Tate. And after you do that, subscribe Freedom Train Network. But yeah. do that as well. But <laughs> subscribe, Hey Dr. Tate, because not only mm -hmm. will you be able to benefit from the information, but if you have children, your children will be able to benefit from the information that's displayed on the YouTube channel. So with that being said, could you tell us about your YouTube channel and also show us about some of the things or the experiments that you do on your YouTube channel? 
Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I set up the YouTube channel, which was, it's another thing that's out of, it's not a thing that Tasia would have just grown up saying she wanted to do. Uh, I actually don't like hearing myself after recording or after streaming. And I don't like seeing myself because it's always like, why did that one hair? Why is that one hair? Or why do you sound like that? So I created the YouTube channel for all of you. If you have kids, uh, even the adults like looking at the things, especially with the STEM and while black now, it's, that's for all ages. Uh, but mm-hmm. science is the show that Mr. Ward is talking about where I'm showing experiments that you could do from home using stuff that's over the counter or from Walmart, the dollar store, whatever else. So Patrick, I know you said earlier, you keep referring to these as beakers, but <laughs> it's the stuff that you can really find just by going to a convenience store. And this is to build into what the mission was originally for kitchen science and now it's evolved into something bigger, which was during the pandemic, parents now have to teach their kids these things that they probably may not know the foundation to understanding how to teach them or a good way of teaching it. So I said, well, I I do science, this is my thing. So why not create a system or some type of show where I'm showing you how to use the stuff in your own house and teach those science objectives or learning principles or whatever else. So Kitchen Science is that show that I do that on. Um, all of these things are located on YouTube, so you have to specifically look for Kitchen Science. But if you go to Kitchen Science, you'll see at the beginning, I try to be cute and come in with some creative way of uh, getting your attention. I am not the most creative person, so don't judge me. But <laughs> I start off talking about what we're going to actually look at. And up there, there's two of me. I could be either Dr. Tay, which you'll see me like this, or I could be Professor Tay. And Professor Tay breaks down the learning principles of what you're actually learning. So I, I, yes, I do the whole get up where I change the hair and the outfit. And I go into a separate room where I'm showing you on a flat, a whiteboard or something, exactly what you're going to be learning. Uh, So today, I'm gonna give just a little snippet of one of the more common ones. I'm gonna exclude this one, Joseph, so that way we don't have to break to make alterations. But this one okay. I really love, and it's really cool. and it doesn't cost more than I'll say five dollars in order for you to actually do this experiment at your house. At your house, uh, quantities can vary according to whatever you want to do. So, in here, I just have vegetable oil, water, and food coloring. And I'm going to use this to essentially just make a lava lamp. And in making a lava lamp at home, we're able to teach the kids about a few different things. Density, you see how the oil is at the top and the water has food coloring and it's at the bottom. That's showing you which one is more dense and which is less dense. You're also seeing solubility or how mixtures are created because why does the water only have the food coloring in it and not the vegetable oil? And then the last thing is them being separated shows you a little bit about hydrophobic versus hydrophilic. We all know that oil and water don't mix, especially, you know, if the saying oil and water don't mix when we're using (laughs) vitamins and stuff. But if you bring it home to the science element, you're essentially saying water and oil don't mix because they have different properties. One of them being that oil is hydrophobic, so it doesn't mix well with water. And that's now a kid knows what hydrophobic is at a younger age because they're going to make this lava lamp. So without having y'all wait too much longer, I'm going to put this here so you can see it better. The only thing that's left to add now are antacids. And we all usually have some type of antacid, especially if you get the heartburn issue. My aunt says that too, so I can always find one. If you don't, there's also uh, like the little, anything that makes a sizzle when it hits the cup, in the inside of the water in the cup, you can use. So this is now gonna create a bubbling effect. And that gives a lava lamp effect that the kids really, really, really enjoy. So now, not only did you teach them how to make a lava lamp, but you taught them all those learning principles that when I grew up, I didn't know what those things were. So- giving them exposure to the things that's taking you past that generational that generational cycle of things that you lacked when you were young. So we're getting a lot from this. It's still bubbling. It's also foaming. And then you get the realism of the color of what I added into each one. So how long does the bubbling last? 
Uh, so it really depends on what you're using. I have a, uh, can I say brands up here on your show? Mm -hmm. so I'm using great value uh, <laughs> Walmart. <laughs> so it looks like it's slowing down now. <laughs> <laughs> but I have used um you have you guys ever seen the vitamin C droplets where you, you put yeah. it in your, your immune system? Those last for a very long time. Um so those work for a good minute. But the best thing about this, if you have a bottle with a cap, this experiment can last forever. And the reason why I say that is because as soon as you add another one, it just starts bubbling again. So not okay. only is it not expensive, but it's something that you can keep creating that excitement over and over and over with the same stuff as you started off by buying with five dollars. Right. Now that is so cool. Ooh. Now we I have put my glass we're from on. the lava amp. We're from the lava lamp era. You know, we the eighties baby. So them lava lamps, they we understand. <laughs> Right, yeah. right, right, right. But I have, I have a lot more other exciting things up there, of course. A lot of the kids like the elephant's toothpaste, which I wanted to show you today. Um, and it creates a foaming explosion. So if anybody's watching and they want to do that, they can go on to the YouTube. And I also do, in the midst of my live experiments, which I try to host like live science party with the kids, I blow up things. So that's something that you can't do because it's not stuff you can find over the counter and stuff. But I try right. to that in a real scientific lab, we use things at higher concentrations. So for this, I use um, oil and water. So I guess this is a bad example. For the <laughs> elephant's toothpaste, I use hydrogen peroxide and dish detergent, uh, food coloring and yeast. In a lab, we would use hydrogen peroxide at approximately 30%. Over the counter, you're getting it at, I think, oh, 3%. So 10 times less in concentration. I have burnt my hand with hydrogen peroxide in the lab before. Essentially, it's just wow. building, it's taking the oxygen out of your skin because that's what it's off of. So it, it kind of creates this sizzle burn going on. It doesn't leave a mark or anything, but it hurts and you can't see it and you know it's there. Um, so that's where it brings the kids to this reality of that's why lab, that's why scientists wear lab coats or goggles or gloves. And that's why they need all this training because it's taking you from what you're learning from home or in your class to something that could be more detrimental to your health. People could die in mm -hmm. lab, become disabled after doing some of these experiments and stuff. So it gives them exposure to the extreme part, but of course the kids don't, they don't really care too much about that. They really just like the explosions and stuff. They like, <laughs> and they like to see Dr. K risk her life to show them something new. So whatever I have to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. hey. Now, but like you are, you are definitely helping to make science and STEM fly. Like, cause it, it's like, if, if you was like my teacher in, in, in elementary school, I'd probably be a scientist. So I have a whole different level of appreciation for it because yeah. it's like, not only can, you know, I see myself in you. It's like, all right, well, this look cool. It doesn't, you, when you are presenting it, it doesn't look corny. You know, we grew up right. in an era where like, you know, you got, you either want to be Eddie Winslow, but he ain't the best, but Eddie Winslow or Steve Urkel. Like even right, though Steve right, Urkel right. was 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 smart and things, it's like it's not cool to be smart. You black. You it's like, well, hold up now. Right? Hold up. Like we <laughs> we created smart. What you mean? Right, right, right. I so, agree. Well, I appreciate that. I I, I resonate with Steve Urkel. So <laughs> look, whatever works for you. Whatever yeah. works for you. <laughs> Yeah, okay. so my big thing with it, my big thing with the YouTube thing, and I, I definitely appreciate the fact that you say I make it look cool because I feel like I'm a look, I am a nerd. I um mm -hmm. corny in myself. So if you really want to know Dr. Jones behind the scenes, she is corny. Like I do a lot of corny stuff. <laughs> and I love singing, I love laughing, and I'm I'm probably toxically positive. So, you know, that's me in a nutshell. But when I look at YouTube and even a long time ago when I was looking at YouTube and even now when I'm looking for new material, I only I don't see people that look like me showing these uh -huh. stuff that you could do at home. 
So I'm glad that somebody's saying, hey, you make it look fine and I can see myself in you and so on. That's the point. The point is to say, hey, yeah. by YouTube, something that all of you kids are surfing on right now, you can find something that inspires you. And I'm right. glad one of those beacons that creates that inspiration. So thank you. No problem. We definitely want to make sure that we help you get the message out. We help you. Uh, we help your platform grow. So that's why we definitely have to stay in touch. Absolutely, because now I have two programs in mind. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so we're we're down to our final question, and I'm I'm sure you you caught the drift right now that Pat is unstable. So <laughs> <laughs> that was a so shot. We get, we give him a couple of questions to keep him calm. <laughs> oh my goodness! But Yo. this this last question is is um it's a question we asked all our guests, but it's his question, and mm -hmm. we're not at our normal setup, so he would usually get a drum roll. I'm not gonna do a fake drum roll, so you don't have to think of a drum roll in your head, Pat. But okay. do your question. <laughs> First off, I like unstable. That's a good word. That's a good word. Usually he say I'm um, like retarded or something. <laughs> well, <laughs> unstable is a step in the right direction. Oh my um, goodness! <laughs> take all kinds of abuse from Joseph Ward. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> so if you were the all powerful, all knowing ruler of Black America, what would you change, and what would your message to the people be? So if I was all that powerful, my biggest message would be create, 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 but not just create where you're the person that's on top. I'm okay with sharing my table. So create and bring other people to the table so we can create a bigger impact as we go. And so essentially my message is to say, in order to create change and to make things better, we have to work together. We have to work together and we have to see the bigger picture and even if we don't agree on every part of the big picture, work towards the main goal. So right okay. now, I'm advocating for diversity in STEM, you don't have to be ad ad advocating for diversity in STEM. You can be advocating for diversity in uh, business or arts or whatever else. Let's work together. Let's work. To I'm sure we can find a platform and a way to do that. My table has plenty of spaces for all of you. And so my big message is to say, Keep pulling those chairs out. Keep creating those tables for those opportunities. But share in the collaborative, the collaborative spirit, so that way your impact could be a lot greater than what it would be if you were trying to do this alone. Because nobody's powerful that powerful alone. Right. Right. Definitely. You see, you are so cool. I just want to let you know you got a fan in me. No, nah, seriously, I've been I've been impressed with you since I first met with you. But yeah, you got a fan in me, so definitely. Aww, yeah, so I cool. appreciate you got that. a fan in me. <laughs> there, you there you go. We we starting the singing group soon, so look out. For you our, got our a name. fan in me. Well, we can't okay. use that because that's a Toy Story ripoff. But yeah, <laughs> right. We got to we got to remix it. We will. We creative. <laughs> so. So once again, Dr. Tate, how can people get in contact with you? Tell them about your website. <laughs> Tell them about your YouTube channel once again. So if you don't hear anything else beyond the first thing that I'm going to say, go to heydrtate.com, H-E-Y-D-R-T-A-Y.com. And I say this because it tells you all of my platforms as Dr. Tate, but it also tells you all the platforms of Stemming Wild Black as well. So Stemming Wild Black is on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, a LinkedIn is to come, and it's on the Hey Dr. Tay web website. And to Hey Dr. Tay, myself, and all my, the other initiatives, whether they're collaborations with schools, which, by the way, I started an LLC this year, so another triumph. Um, okay. Word. Word. As a STEM consultant. <laughs> so, you know, if you ever need to bring the, the ideas to make things real and give the exposure and help out your students, Call on Hey Dr. Tay. Uh, I have an LLC set up to create a whole curriculum and to help whatever program, after school program, academic program, whatever else 
And though that information can be found on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm also on TikTok. Guilty pleasure. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I try to I try to hang in there with the youth. I mean, if you're gonna try to help the youth, you gotta go where they're looking. So I'm up there as well as YouTube. And then, like I said, if you didn't hear anything else, go to h e y d r t a y dot com. All of that information is up there. You can find me. You even have a number to contact me and email addresses as well. So I can't even hide if I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, Joe, there you, go. you know what we got to do? Because we're going to drop. We always uh, planning our next album, right? And so <laughs> what, the next, like, we could do a, a, a theme song type jingle. For Dr. Tay, right? For her, oh, you go. all right. There you go. Don't tell right. me that. I'm looking for one. I'm looking <laughs> on it. There you go. We give it the there old 1980 vibe. You know, we can vibe. There you go. Dr. Tay, what we doing? We're gonna be, we're, we're gonna gonna make a comeback. To there you go. We're gonna make a comeback. <laughs> we performing at all your local gas stations. Look out for oh, us in the COVID <laughs> world. Where we coming? <laughs> Hey. Oh my goodness. Hey. <laughs> she, she is the incredible Dr. Latasia Jones. And we're so grateful to have you um and everything that you bring to the table. You are definitely appreciated. And ser seriously, if there's ever anything I can do to help, don't hesitate to let me know because people like you, when we have you all in our community, we have to make sure that we, we nurture you, give you your flowers while you're alive. You, you need to understand that you are a real impact in our community. So don't hesitate. And like I said, we're definitely going to talk more um, in the coming days so we can yes. do other things because you are you just incredible. And like I say, I'm the I'm the I'm the president of your fan club now. So <laughs> nobody else can have that fight. <laughs> I appreciate that. I, and like I said to you, if you ever think of something where you want to reach out to me and you want my help with something, I'm here for that too. I told you my right. table is not right. just for STEM and oh, yeah. not just for black. So I'm I got some for ideas. I have okay. some ideas. Let's do it. Let's hey, do it. Freedom Train, Freedom Train Podcast Series. Remember, check out our website at www.freedomtrainradio.com. This is the greatest podcast ever because we have guests like Dr. Latasha Jones. So with that being said, I'm Joseph Ward. He's Patrick Irvin, and we'll catch y'all next time. Peace out. <laughs>